Hello, hello everybody, this is TipTopMTG here today with another Match the Gathering spoiler video. In today's video, we are covering the second day of Commander Ikoria 2020 spoilers. So, uh, we're going to start off with a bunch of Ikoria spoilers separated by color, and then I'm going to have one normal Ikoria spoiler at the end. So, why don't we jump right into this? Starting off, we have Martial Impetus. It's a 3 cost white enchantment aura. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus 1 plus 1 and is goaded, which means it attacks each combat if able and attacks a player other than you if able. So, it's a very interesting mechanic. It allows you to basically force things to happen, but they don't negatively affect you. It's a very commander esque um, mechanic. Next, we have whenever, and then it says whenever enchanted creature attacks, each other creature that's attacking one of your opponents gets plus one plus one until end of turn. So it encourages your opponent to attack using that creature, and it's going to buff them up. So it's encouraging not only that one creature to not attack you because it can't, um, but it also encourages uh, all your the other creatures to attack someone else. So uh, that's a very interesting deck or card. Um, we have Verge Ranger. It's a 3 cost white creature human scout. 3-3 three, three, with first strike and it says you may look at the top card of your library at any time and as long as an opponent controls more lands than you, you may play lands from the top of your library in any order. Not in any order. You may play lands from the top of your library. So this is uh, very similar to a lot of green cards but what makes it white is that you have to be behind and this is very similar to something called land tax which is an enchantment that says whenever it's like at the beginning of your upkeep if you have less lands than an opponent um, you can basically put, search your library for three basic land cards and put them into your hand. Now, this lets you just put it straight from the top of your library, which then lets you actually draw the cards you want to draw. It also lets you just look at the top card of your library at any time, so that's very interesting. Overall, I actually really like the design of this card. I think we have called the Copper Coats. It's a three cost instant with Strive, and it says this spell costs two more to cast for each target beyond the first. So, if you want, you could target four things with this, and it would cost six mana extra. It says, choose any number of target opponents, create X11 white human creatures, human soldier creature tokens, where X is the number of creatures those opponents control. So if your opponent is playing a swarm deck, you can then create a bunch of 1-1s. If your opponent is attacking you with everything, boom, now you have a blocker for every single one of their creatures. So, especially because this is at an instant speed, this can be a very devastating card. If they think they can just win... And you're able to for three do this, or like for instance, um, if you wanted to use this as a value spell, you could then pay five or six if you're in a four player commander game, or not six, uh, seven, if you're in a four player commander game, and then just make a one one for every creature on the battlefield that's not yours. So overall, I really like it. Next, we have Cartographer's Hawk. It's a two cost white creature bird, two one with flying, and it says when it deals combat damage to a player who controls more lands than you, return it to its owner's hand. If you do, you may put search your library for a planes card, put it on the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. So, we're seeing more ways that white can ramp. Unfortunately, so you'd have to put play this. So you're probably gonna play this turn two. Then the sec next turn, you are going to. Or like so turn one nothing turn two play this turn three attack get an extra land turn four and you now have to replay the cartographer's hawk so it's kind of an interesting um i'm not sure how powerful the effect really is i'm sure there's probably something you could do with it to mess with this but i'm not sure Next, we have Dismantling Wave. It's a three-cost source. mean, it says for each opponent, destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment that player controls. And then it has Cycling for eight. And whenever you cycle it, destroy all artifacts and enchantments. So here you can either choose, pick and choose enchantments, or even in like the Cycling deck, which allows you to pay zero for the first thing you cycle each turn. So that ability would actually be pay zero, and at instant speed, destroy all artifacts and enchantments. That's pretty crazy. But if you don't want to, because you have some good uh, artifacts and enchantments, you can just pick an artifact or enchantment per player so that's pretty cool next we have herald of the forgotten it's an eight cost creature cap b66 flying when herald of the forgotten enters the battlefield if you cast it return any number of target permanent cards with cycling abilities from your graveyard to the battlefield so this is a way for white to do recursion it's more specifically around um, cycling and it's a very high cost so it's clearly meant to you know be a like finisher type of card you play this you have like a bunch of really expensive things because a lot of expensive things have cycling and then you just basically win the game so um oh it's an okay card 
Next, we have Eternal Dragon. It's a seven-cost creature dragon spirit with flying, and it says pay five, return it from your graveyard to your hand, activate this ability only during your upkeep, and then you can pay two to plane cycle it, so you can discard it, search your library for a planes card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle your library. So the idea here is that you can keep redoing that. You Basically, you can pay seven to search your library for a planes card at any time. This was last reprinted in Commander 2013. It's not that great of a card, but I, it's okay. I mean, like, I, I can see a value in this. There's probably some loop you can do with this, so it's okay. Next, we have Astral Drift. This was last reprinted in Modern Horizons, and it says whenever you cycle Astral Drift or cycle another card while Astral Drift is on the battlefield, you may exile target creature. If you do, return that, car, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control be the next end step. So whenever you cycle something, you just flicker something, essentially. And then you can also cycle this card. So a uh, very good card, especially in a flicker-based deck, or in a, uh, both, I guess, flicker, but you, more specifically cycling-based deck. Now we have um, some more partner commanders, because each deck has a pair of partner commanders. So we have Tyrion, Champion of Freedom. It's a four-cost legendary creature human soldier, and it partners with Silvar. And then at the beginning of your end step, if you attack... If you attacked this turn, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token, and then Silvar says, uh, partner with Menace, and then sacrifice a human, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it, it gains indestructible until end of turn. So the idea here is that maybe you attack with something one turn, right? And then, so this is actually in the human base deck. And then you maybe you sacrifice a human if you can't actually attack with Silvar. And then they have to have two blockers for it, but then you can sacrifice a human to give it indestructible, but Tyrion's going to keep generating 1-1 one, one human soldiers. So the first turn, you're going to actually have to sacrifice a human um, unless you can attack with Silvar without any caught threats. And then after that, you'll be able to just basically put a plus one, plus one counter on Silvar every single turn and attack without worry because it has indestructible. So, very cool com combination. I don't know if that's really commander worthy, but it's kind of interesting. Um, I mean, yeah. Next we have Psychic Impetus. It's a three cost enchantment aura. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and is goaded. And whatever enchanted creature attacks, you scry to. So, yeah. Um, this is another one in a cycle of card enchantments that are something impetus, and it makes it so. Um, it, it basically, a lot. It, all of them have goaded and like do interesting things. So it, it's it's kind of weird. Um. You know, I mean, technically, you can enchant your own creature if you want full control over it. It gets plus two, plus two, and has to attack each combat, but, I mean, you could. Next, we have Crystalline Resonance. It's a three-cost enchantment. It says, whenever you cycle a card, you may have it become a copy of another target permanent until your next turn, except it has this ability. So, any permanent. It could be a land. It could be... I don't know, it could be someone's commander, it could be anything. I love becoming copies of something cards, so I love this card. Um, it looks really fun. We have Souvenir Snatcher, it's a 5 cost 4 4 creature and bird with mutate for 1 extra. When you fl it has flying and whenever it mutates, gain control of target non-creature artifact. So you can just start stealing their mana ramp and even if a creature, if you, even if a deck doesn't revolve around artifacts in commander, you're more than likely going to have an, at least one opponent with an artifact. So it's overall pretty good. Next, we have Barracuda of the Tide. This is a translated card, so the name might be different. Uh, cards may ha be worded differently, just so you know. This is a four-cost creature fish, and it says any player may cast spells as though they had flash, so including your opponents. And your opponents cannot cast spells during your turn, so um, it shuts down counter spells, but it makes everything else have flash. So if you're in a two-player game, this basically, I mean, like, it, it gives your opponent an advantage. Oh, they can cast creature spells at instant speed during their attack phase as, like, boost, or, like, if there's a sorcery speed, in, uh, like, a sorcery speed combat trick, I guess it's not a combat trick, but a, a sorcery speed boost, they can do it at instant speed. But if you're in a two-player game, this pretty much only benefits you. So, pretty interesting. I mean, it can benefit them if they have, like, at the beginning of your end step, untap all your lands, and then now they can cast spells with all those lands. So, I mean, it's not completely useless, but uh, in, a, in a multiplayer game, it has a lot less value, actually. 
Next, we have Halden Avid Arcanist. It's a three-cost legendary creature human wizard, and he partners with Paco, who's on the left here. It says you may play non-creature cards from exile with fetch counters on them if you exiled them, and you may spend mana though it was mana of any color. And so that is actually a useless ability without the partner, and the partner is a 3-3 with haste um, for 5. And it says whenever it attacks, exile the top cards of each player's library, put a fetch counter on each of them, put a plus one plus one counter for each non-creature card this way, exiled this way, and then yeah. Um, because they are exiled, um, every player knows what they are, so it's not like you can just go get a counter spell and then it's a secret, and wahaha, I now have a counter spell. And, um, but it is a very interesting card. I like playing other people's decks. It's kind of a, a fun thing to do. So um, I, I I like this little pair. Next we have Jace, Architect of Thought. And whoever spoiled this was like, ooh, I'm going to use the blurriest image I can find. So you can find the original printing of this, which was, I believe this one's in... This one is from Dual Decks, Baraska versus Jace, or Jace versus Baraska. And it's a four cost... A legendary planeswalker Jace for loyalty and it says plus one until your next turn. Whenever a creature an opponent controls attacks, it gets minus one, minus zero until end of turn. Then a minus two, reveal the top three cards of your library. An opponent separates those cards into two piles. Put one pile in your hand and the other in the bottom of your library. Always a fun effect. And then minus eight for each player, search your live search that player's library for a non-land card and exile it. Then that player shuffles his or her library. You may cast those cards without paying their mana cost. So you just get their best thing. Uh, very interesting. Next, we have a Parasitic Impetus. It's a 3-cost enchantment or, and guess what? Enchanted Creature gets plus 2, plus 2, and goaded. You know, are you sensing a theme? And whenever Enchanted Creature attacks, its controller loses 2 life, and you gain 2 life. Now, they don't get a choice in the attacking, so they're going to basically just start losing life. And this is a lot better in 2-player formats. Um, I mean, not but not really, because uh, goaded doesn't do that. In, like, 3-player formats, um, where you can very predictably tell where things are going to happen, and so you can manipulate the board more. Either way, we have Species Specialist. It's a four-cost creature, human warrior. As it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type, and whenever a creature of the chosen type dies, you may draw a card. So if your opponent's playing a tribal deck, you could name their tribe. If you're playing a tribal deck, you could name that type, so that whenever one of your creatures dies, you can draw a card. That's probably going to end up being better, but it, but I could see this being used in other ways. Um, next, we have Nikari, Nikara, Layer Scavenger. It's a three-cost legendary creature, and it partners with the Yannick. And it has Menace, and it says, whenever another creature you control leaves the battlefield, if it had one or more counters on it, you draw a card and lose a life. So this is going to clearly go in a deck full of different types of counters. And then Yannick, Scavenging Sentinel, um, when it enters the battlefield, exile another target creature, another creature you control until it leaves the battlefield. When you do distribute X plus one plus one counters among any number of target creatures, where X is the exiled creature's powers, you can put a bunch of counters on things so that Nikiria will draw you a bunch of cards. So, uh, very interesting. Next, we have a Titan Hunter. It's a five cost creature, human warrior. At the beginning of each player's end step, if no creatures died this turn, it deals four damage to that player. So... It's encouraging people to like, kill, 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 otherwise you're going to take four damage. And then you can pay one black, or two black, sacrifice a creature to gain four life. So that will not only make a creature die, which means you won't take four damage, but it'll also gain you four life. So if a creature doesn't die next turn, you just basically broke even. Um, so, yeah. I like this card. I, I like the idea of speed up this commander game. We gotta start killing things. Next, we have Daring Fiend, Binder, Fiend Bonder. It's a four cost creature, human warlock with haste, and it attacks each combat fable. So it's gonna hit you for five, like the turn it comes out in black. That's kind of weird. And then you can pay two black, exile it from your graveyard, put an indestructible counter on target creature, activate this ability only anytime you could cast a sorcery. I didn't think they said indestructible counters were a thing, but apparently they are. So let's do, uh, the next one is Dredge the Mire, it's a four cost sorcery, each opponent chooses a creature card in the graveyard, puts those cards on the battlefield under your control. I believe this is a new card, um, it, it is not within, um, Skyfall, so I just thought I've seen something very similar to this. Next we have Deadly Trick, it's a four cost instant, it says if you control a commander you may cast a spell without paying its mana cost, this is, uh, one card in a cycle, and this one says Exile Target Creature, which is the most, like, direct, like, interacting with your opponent's board for free that I have seen in this cycle. Um, I could see this being a very, like, devastating part of an infinite combo, because then you don't need to get infinite mana. You just need a way to infinitely recur something from your graveyard, which may end up needing infinite mana, but I feel like this could be part of a kill literally everything on the board and anything that ever comes on the board again kind of combo. So, yeah. 
Next we have um, Agitator Ant. It's a three cost creature insect and at the beginning of your end step each player may put two plus one plus one counters on a creature they control. Go to each creature that had counters put on this way. So it's going to make everything get really big but nothing's going to be able to attack you at least the turn that it gets big. The turn after that they're free to attack you but it, it kind of uh, promotes this theme of just everyone attacks each other let's get this game over with so yeah. Next, we have Fireflux Squad. It's a four-cost creature human soldier, 4-3, and it says it has haste, and whenever it attacks, you may exile another target attacking creature you control. If you do, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Put that card on the battlefield tapped and attacking, and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So, um, this would probably go in a deck full of a lot of really expensive creatures and that you can do some really interesting stuff with. I, I like the card. I mean, it's kind of free casting, but I enjoy those yeah, mechanics even if they are a bit busted. Next, we have Lava Brink Floodgates. It's a four cost artifact, and you can just tap it to add two red, which is very not red. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player may put a Doom Counter on Lava Brink Floodgates or remove a Doom Counter from it. Then, if it has three or more Doom Counters on it, sacrifice it. When you do, it deals six damage to each creature. See, that feels like a red effect. Adding two mana does not feel like a red effect, so uh, it's kind of weird. Spellfire Phoenix, it's a 5 cost creature Phoenix flying, and whenever it enters the battlefield, you may return it in Center Sorcery with cycling from your hand to the grave from your graveyard to your hand. So uh you can cycle something and then cast it, or you could actually cast the instant or sorcery and bring it back. It just happens to have cycling. And then at the beginning of your each end step, if you have cycled at least two cards this turn, retain return it from your graveyard to your hand. So you can just keep casting this over and over again and it's gonna help you return cards with cycling and so it's part of this kind of like infinite combo here uh where i guess if you have infinite mana um but it says at the beginning of each end step so it's not really that crazy but i, I like the card um i think it's good uh next we have predatory impetus it's a five cost en uh, enchantment or and it says enchanted creature gets plus three plus three it must be blocked to fable and is goaded which means that it's gonna have to attack someone who's not you unless you're in a two-player game and then that it, something's gonna have to block it which means that there's going to be a lot of carnage i think this is one of my favorite ones even though it does cost the most so far Animus Awakening, it's a X and a green. It's from Magic Origins, actually. It's a sorcery and it says reveal the top X cards of your library, put all land cards from among them onto the battlefield tapped and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. And it has spell mastery. If there are two or more instants and or sorcery cards in your graveyard, untap those lands. So, um, a pretty good ramp spell that can either majorly ramp you at late game or early game, it can just throw a couple lands on the field. So I actually really like this card and I have played it before. Next, we have Fang Breaker. It's a six cost cre uh, creature beast with mutate four. Whenever this creature mutates, destroy target non creature permanent, including lands. Its controller creates a 3 3 green beast token. Okay. It is allowing you to destroy lands, planeswalkers, um, artifacts, enchantments. Like, that is kind of crazy. Now, it can't kill creatures, which is good, because green doesn't get kill target creature, but I also didn't think green got destroy target planeswalker, although I guess they do have a destroy target permanent card, so I guess, but um, yeah, this is a kind of an insane card. Kind of crazy. Then we have Glade Muse. It's a three cost creature beast, and whenever a player casts a spell, if it's not their turn, that player draws a card. So this is kind of the opposite of a lot of the cards we've seen. This one is encouraging players to cast spells not on their turn. So, um, interesting card. Not sure if I like it, because that encourages counter spell play, but it's fine. We have Capri. Capri Copio, it's a uh, X and a green for a creature Goat Hydra, and it, it enters the battlefield with the X plus one plus one counters on it, like a lot of Hydras do, and then it says pay two, put a plus one plus one counter on it, then you may choose again which player Capio is attacking. Only the player who he's attacking can activate this ability, and only before the declare attacker steps. I love this card. So if, for, if you don't understand how this text is, basically you're going to go to combat with this 7-7, right? And you're going to say, hey, I'm going to attack you, player one. And they're like, no, 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 I don't want to be attacked. So then they're going to pay two mana, and then they're going to make it and now an 8-8 eight, eight, and, and instead send it at player two. And then player two's going to be like, no, 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 send it back at you. And then they're going to spend two mana and it's slowly going to get bigger. And they actually can't attack you. So um, that's a really fun card. I enjoy that. You're making your ma opponent spend mana, it's making yours bigger, and if you're just playing this big creature, it probably doesn't matter who it hits, so, 
yeah, if you threw some like infect on this thing and players were like, I need to redirect this, otherwise I'm dead, and then it gets bigger. Oh, it's great. Oh, I love this card. Next, we have Villainous Wealth. It's a X, black, green, blue. Sorcery, target opponent exiles the top X cards of their library. You may cast any number of them with con converted mana cost X or less without paying their mana cost. You are still technically paying the mana cost up front, but if you're paying 10, you could cast 10, 10, 10s, and you're not paying 100 mana. You're paying 13, so uh, it's okay. I mean, like, it's good, um, but I'm talking about, like, from a balance perspective. And this was last printed in Cons of Tarkir. We have Nahiri the Harbinger. It's a four cost legendary planeswalker Nahiri, and you can plus two her to discard a card if you do draw a card. You can minus two her to exile target enchantment, tapped artifact, or tapped creature. And then a minus eight, search your library for an artifact or a creature card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. It gains haste. Return it to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. So, a uh, very interesting planeswalker. Um, it starts at four loyalty, so. You're gonna drop it in, you're gonna move it up to six, the next turn you're gonna move it up to eight, and then the next turn you could ultimate and you could probably win that turn. You could uh, throw like an Ember Cool on the board or a lot of different things, so um, it's interesting. Next we have Exiris, the Rithering, the Withering, Rithering Storm. It's a two green, blue, red legendary creature, Snake Leviathan 3-5 with flying, and it says whenever an opponent draws a card except the first one, they draw each of their draw steps. Create a 1-1 one, one green snake creature token. So you're encouraging your opponent to draw cards, more than one card per turn. So this might go in a deck where you're making everyone wheel a fortune their hand away or something like that. And then whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you and that player each draw that many cards. So you're going to each draw three cards, or if this thing's stronger, you're going to draw... Um, whatever its power is. So, a very good card. Next, we have the Locust God, a six-cost legendary creature god. Flying, whenever you draw a card, create a 1-1 one, one blue and red insect creature token with flying and haste. Pay four, draw a card, discard a card, and when it dies, return to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. Well, that's a lot. So, um, this is a very, very, very good card. It's a 4-4, four, four, and it was last reprinted in Hour of Devastation, and we've already seen, I've already seen it in Commander a lot, so, um, yeah, not much else to talk about. We have Nissa, Steward of Elements. It's an X, green, blue. It enters with X, uh, loyalty counter, so it could, uh, ultimate the turn it comes out. It has plus two to scry two. You can also zero and look at the top card of your library if it's a land or creature card with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of loyalty counters on Nissa. You may put it on the battlefield. Whew. Um, uh, interesting, uh, powerful, and then minus six, untap up to two target lands, they become five fives with flying and haste, they're still lands. That's kind of underwhelming. I think the zero is probably better. I mean, I mean, flying and haste, so, I mean, probably not, because that's hitting them for ten, like, right there, but, uh, I like the zero, it's more fun. Either way, um, we have Akim, the Soaring Wind, it's a... Red, white, and blue, legendary creature, dinosaur, bird, with flying, and it says whenever you create one or more creature tokens for the first time each turn, create a 1-1 one, one white bird creature token with flying, so um, you're going to keep increasing the amount of tokens you have, and then you can pay six, and creature tokens you control gain double strike, and now since a lot of your creature tokens are flying, you now have flying double strikers who are probably getting a bunch of boost. Um, I would totally build a commander deck around this which I guess is why it's in the product. We have Binding Ornament. It's a three-cost artifact where you can tap it for a mana of any color, and you can pay for and tap in each player who controls a card named Blinding, Binding Ornament um, draws a card. So, pretty good. If you're the only one who has it, it's, I mean, that's not great, but it's also not bad, saying it also can ramp you. So, uh, it's decent. We have Commander Sphere. I'm really not going to go over this. It's in every Commander product. We also have Sol Ring, which is in every Commander product. We also have Fluctuator, which is not in every Commander product, and I actually marked in the bottom right. It was last reprinted in Urza Saga, and it actually cost $21.48 as of now. It's going to plummet now that people know it's reprinted, but... Yeah, this allows you to make cycling abilities at you activate, cost up to two less to activate. Very powerful card. We have Manascape Refractor, which is a three cost artifact. When it enters, it enters the battlefield tapped, and it has all activated abilities, all lands on the battlefield, including your opponents, and you may spend mana over any mana to pay the activation cost of its abilities. So it does absolutely nothing unless your opponent has cool lands. I mean, I guess it can always tap for mana, so I like the card. I'd probably play it. It's the kind of card I would play, but... I'm just that kind of player. Then we have Twinning Staff. It's a three-cost artifact. If you would copy a spell more than one time, instead copy it that many times, plus an additional time. So you're going to, like, if you say copy target spell, you're actually going to copy it twice. Um, and then it says you may choose new targets for the copy. 
Um, and then pay seven, copy target and insert first three spell you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. So, I mean, you'll be able to pay use this to copy something, and then you actually end up copying it twice. So, uh, I like the card. It's not that... I mean, it's powerful for three if you can drop it out early and then keep duplicating things. You'll get your value out of it. Um, it just it goes in a very particular type of deck. We have Command Tower. This was in everything, and it was last reprinted in Throne of Eldraine Brawl. We have uh, Path of Ancestry, which is Command Tower, but it enters the battlefield tapped. But when you cast a creature, you get to scry one, like a creature that shares a type with your commander. So it's really good for tribal um, commander decks. And that's it for Commander Spoilers. We have one spoiler for normal. Uh, Corey, I want to just go over that. It's Lava Brink Adventure. It's a three-cost creature human soldier, and it enters the battlefield. Choose e e odd or even. And it has protection from the chosen converted mana cause, and you actually get to choose it. So say your opponent has a bunch of one-drops or a bunch of tokens. You could either name odd or even, so if they have a bunch of tokens, you could name even, and boom, now he can block any token. That's not a copy. Um... Very powerful card. Um, I Yeah, very powerful. So that's going to do it for spoilers today. There have been a lot. Um, tell me what you're thinking of Ikoria and Ikoria Commander so far. That looks like it's going to be all of the new cards for Commander. There's probably going to be some that are released at like 10 o'clock tonight. And I'll cover those in tomorrow's video. There are going to be two videos tomorrow. Um, one, three videos tomorrow. One where I cover all of the commander stuff, including the full deck list of all the commander products. Um, one where I cover all the normal Ikoria spoilers, and one where I talk about how commander could be coming to MTG Arena. Alrighty, guys, it's gonna do it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.